Hey there YouTube, this is Robert again with another SOLIDWORKS tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about all of the different advanced mates in SOLIDWORKS and what they do so that way you can make better assemblies. So I've made a couple of demo pieces here. You can see I've got this track and some pieces that slide into them. And we're going to make them slide along this track and we're going to do a couple of fun things for them. And then you can decide what, what you're going to make them useful for. Um, so we've already got our parts inserted. We're going to start the mates. I'm going to use a couple of regular mates here at the beginning. I'm just going to grab this bottom piece and I'm going to mate it to this top surface inside the track. I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. It automatically selects the coincident mate, which is good because that's what we want. Get that centered up for you. Now, uh, normally if you wanted them to slide in the track, you can make like this side face coincident with the face that's along here. However, I've intentionally made these pieces narrower than the track and you want them to be centered. Now if you had like a plane that was running up the center you could mate that together and that would work but I specifically intentionally made these pieces so that way the plane is off to the side. So you'd have to make a custom plane which you could do but there's an easier way. We're going to use advanced mates here. I'm going to remove that selection. I'm going to center this piece here. So we're going to use the width mate. The width mate allows you to make four selections and it will center the two faces between the other two. So we're going to select this face and this face as like the boundaries and then the tab selections we're going to select the two faces of the part and it's going to center them in between. Click the check mark. Done. So now I'm going to show you this part it can float free because it has no mates on it. It's just sliding along this plane that's attached to. This one, however, only moves along the track. Now, if I use the right click button and try to rotate it, it won't rotate because it's trapped. This one I can rotate and I can twist around still. So now we're going to add the same mate, advanced mates, width mate. We're going to select this face and this face. And then for our tab selections, we're going to select this face and this face. It's going to twist it and center it. So we're all set. So that's good. So now they can slide along the track. The next advanced mate that I'm going to show you is the symmetric mate. So the symmetric mate will uh, mate two faces or two vertices symmetric to a plane. So we're going to select the symmetric mate. It's going to ask us for selections. I want this face and this face to be symmetric to each other. And I want it to be across the front plane, I'm sorry, the right plane of the assembly, because you can see that goes through the center of the part. So we're going to make that selection. doesn't look like it changed much, but, oh, I'm sorry, I selected it in the wrong spot. There we go. There we go. Now, when I slide my parts, they will move parallel to each other, symmetrically about that plane, which is kind of fun. The next advanced mate I want to show you is this uh, linear uh, coupler mate. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to remove the symmetric mate because this isn't useful to me right now. Go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this piece over here and I'm going to move this piece kind of close-ish to it. And what I'm going to say is, okay, go back to mates, advanced mates, linear coupler. So what this allows you to do is select a couple of faces you usually want to leave these two fields cleared. You can look at the help documents about what they do. They're not they're not very useful for the most part. And I'm going to make this two. What this is basically going to say is that when I move, for every inch that I move the blue face, the purple face will move twice as much. And you can hit reverse and it will go the opposite direction if you want. So we'll click OK. And when I do that, now that slides out twice as much. And it'll go both the directions too. So now it'll slide twice as much as the other, and you can set any amount that you want to do that. The last uh, advanced mate for these two pieces is going to be this uh, limiting mate. Now this limiting distance here will uh, is kind of like the distance mate and standard mates, except it allows you to set a maximum and a minimum. So I want to be able to make this to move between two inches and half an inch from these two faces. So now, click OK, 
the closest, the furthest I can get this piece from that face is two inches, and the closest I can get to it is half an inch. And our linear coupler made is still in there, so the other one's still moving uh, along with it. But as I slide past it, like normally, I, before I could slide it out here, I can't do that anymore. And you can do the exact same thing with uh, with angle. You just pick a maximum, minimum degrees, and it'll do the same thing. Uh, for the last mate, that's the path mate, we need to actually create a path. So I'm going to do a quick save here, and I'm going to hit control and drag my part, and then release my mouse, release the control button. That adds a new part. And I'm going to make a three-dimensional sketch. This sketch is going to represent some path that I want this part to be locked into. And I'm going to just draw a spline. Oops. I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to do this. Ooh. I'm just going to delete this one. Whoops. Zoom in here and delete that. Okay, so you can see that this, mate, it, this path moves in three dimensions. Now what I'm going to do here is go back to the assembly. I'm sorry, i got to exit the sketch. Back to the assembly, hit the mate button, and now I'm going to go back to advanced mates and select path. Now I'm going to select a vertex on the components. So I'm going to select this vertex here. And then for my path, I'm going to select this line. Selection Manager can help you to choose multiple sketch entities that need to be might meet it together, but because I've got a spline, it just selects it all at once. Click OK. Now what that does is now I can drag this part along the path. And the only thing that's locked down is that vertex. So I can actually like rotate it. Ooh, it doesn't like that. I can rotate it around the line, or I can drag it along the line. And if I were to make another vertex here, um, I could go back to the path mate and I could say I want this point here and this path. And now both of them will be locked onto the path. But it's decided to do it in two different places, so now it's going to be kind of stuck. It's going to be pretty difficult for that to solve, but, but you can do that if you wanted to. I'm going to delete the, the second one of those two because it doesn't make, really make a lot of sense. But yeah. And so that's the path mate. Those are all of your advanced mates uh, and all the things that they can do. Feel free to review my my video here to, to see them again. Please suggest uh, other subjects that you'd like me to do in the future, and I will show them uh, so that way we can all learn SolidWorks a little bit better together. Uh, this has been Robert. Uh, please like my video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Have a good day.